Now it, it was it was it was good to watch, but you couldn't understand it. So that was Mark Wallers. That was when he was with the Atlanta Braves. And yeah. first thing, I just wanted to uh, 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 thank Natalie for helping me do this, and Mark. Uh, it has been fun for the last eight months when I first met you uh, at the gym, and we've been social distancing. And I mean, everything has been clean and we have been good. So it's been great. And when I first met Mark, I mean, uh, this guy does a treadmill and this guy does the uh, uh, elliptical more than anybody. This guy is working his tail off. And, uh, you know, when you're an athlete, you know, unfortunately, you know, you used to working out. And there's so many athletes that, do not work out and they become real big and they have a lot of from diabetes and they have problems. And but this guy right here is not going to have any problems. This guy, when I was living in Atlanta, when my career was over with, I was, uh, 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 Bobby Cox was my uh, uh, roommate in, at Syracuse and we became uh, real good friends. And uh, uh, Bobby was a, a little uh, a third baseman and, uh, Great guy. You couldn't find, and, and Mark would tell you, he's one of the greatest human beings you've ever met. He, he, he was a, a, a player's manager. I mean, he was, he was the best. He just let you play. You give him 120%, you go out there and you play. Okay. That's the type of guy he was. And uh, uh, when I first met Mark, I uh, started thinking about all the times that I actually saw him uh, with the core four uh, in Atlanta with Smoltzy, Glavin, uh, Avery, and Maddox. And this guy in the 90s were act was actually the best, uh, probably the best one, two relief pitchers in the game of baseball. Uh, this guy can actually uh, uh, bring it up there. This guy can actually, I, I think, you know, I read, I, I didn't know this, and Mark told me uh, that he, he once got up to 103. That was and, supposed uh, to be my Ron. <laughs> yeah, you told me that this morning. Thank yes, God. Exactly. You know, thank you. I told you that. <laughs> you I, you know, I didn't know that. I, hey, I just, knew, I just knew he could bring up the heat. Oh, and he it, could bring the heat. Let's, we could bring the heat. Let's bring Mark in. And what an entrance with that video. We might not have heard it, but we can see it. So watching that video again, what memories are, are coming back to you from that moment? You know, you still, I still get goosebumps every time we, uh, every time we do that, you know, and it's just, uh, just the memories of everything we did together as a team and to, you know, be on the middle of the field, you know, winning the last game of the season. Those are just memories that you'll take to the grave with you. You know, wow. it's, uh, you know, the struggles that we had the years going up to 95 and coming close so many times and then you know, the strike short, shortened season in 94. So, I mean, we had a great bunch of guys that were hungry that you know we had a great coaching staff a great manager that you know Bobby like Ron said Bobby was great to play for he basically had two rules you hustle all the time and you show up on time and you know act like a professional and that was it you just went out there and played and uh so guys loved playing for him and you know we just had a lot of talent we had a lot of talented guys that um that w wanted to do whatever it took to win didn't necessarily care about you know, their statistics and if they got the game winning hit or, or whatever, they just, you know, did a lot of the little things it took to win ball games. Oh, absolutely. I mean, talk about those guys that you're with the core four, Bobby Cox, like Hall of Famers. So did you know, I heard before doing my research that there's 115 pitchers that recorded the last out in the World Series and you're one of them. How does that feel? It's kind of scary. It's kind of crazy, you know. It's kind of neat, though, you know. I mean, because well, every... all the pitchers in Major League Baseball, 115, and you are one. Yeah, that's you know, you know what else is a crazy statistic? One of my buddies um, that I grew up uh, back home is my catcher all the way through Little League, Eddie Jakowski. You know, he told me he said if you, all the people who play Major League Baseball, there's like 19,000 total. 
and it's like less than it would fill up like less than half a stadium. You just don't realize how fortunate and how special it is to put on a major league uniform. And speak and speaking of the magnitude of that, going back to the early years of your Braves uh, career, you're young, you're 21 years old, and you're already pitching in the postseason. Did you realize how significant yeah. that was then? No, I was one of those guys that was 21 years old and just happy to be here. You know, uh, I wasn't. You know, it was. You know, we had just come from worst to first. We had a lot of veteran right. guys, not a lot of veteran guys, but in the bullpen, there was a few more veteran guys. And being a young guy, you know, I wasn't thrusted into any real, you know, game decision situations. You know, I mean, not that I was a mop up, but, you know, early on in my career, it was just, you know, let's just bring him along slowly and not, you know, try to screw him up mentally if he blows a big game for us. So, uh, but I mean, I, seriously, I mean, I was just happy to be there. And, um, you know, fortunately I was in, um, you know, witness to one of the greatest game sevens ever in the history of baseball between Jack Morris and John Smoltz, you know, one nothing game seven. Came up a little short on that, but just to have front row seats for that was pretty darn awesome. Incredible. And as Javi is like running to you to in that pile up, what were your thoughts when that was all going down? My thought was I'm standing my ground because we if we both jump up and try to hit, land in each other's arms, we're going to look, look like idiots. So I'm just going to stand my ground and hopefully he jumps and I'll try to catch him because, you know, if we would have both jumped up like this, we probably wouldn't have looked too well. So we didn't plan it or anything. It just happened. But I knew I wasn't leaping. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Amazing. I love it. I love it. Any stories following? Any, you know, parties after? You know, what's funny. That was the first year of – the wild card so the extra round the right, play that's right so after we won the world series you know a lot of us live in a, a lot of us at the time lived in a northern suburb of atlanta called alpharetta right. okay there was a little sports bar up there and i heard you know some of the guys were saying yeah we're gonna go up to the sports bar you know somebody knew the owner and they're gonna rope off a section for us and i went there and i think i had one drink and i was like i just gotta go home i was just mentally fried i think a lot of it to do was with the extra round because the wild card came into play that year. Wild card. The wild card was Colorado, so we had to right, start. Exactly. Two games, we had to start two games out in Colorado against that darn lineup, which was like, I mean, I know there's like the murderers row, but right. the lineup they had in Colorado in that ballpark before they had the humidor and took care of all the baseballs, that was not a fun place to pitch. You know, it's not only the ballpark with that, but with that lineup. So, yeah. so that was tough. You know, that extra round of playoffs really took a lot out of you mentally. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. So it was just one drink and I went home. That's it. I was just <laughs> Smart man. Home. Smart man. <laughs> yeah, right. <gasps> Ron, what's going on? Oh, no, no, no. I'm listening. This is fun for me. Are, are but, you, you know, to watch, let me tell you something. Watching Mark pitch. Ron's thinking about the treadmill because he's going to be there. I don't know, you know what I was kid. thinking? Let me he's tell you. About six hours. <laughs> no, no, no. Let me tell you what I did tonight. <laughs> Wait. I ate. I went to Kroger's tonight yeah. and got a whole pound and a half of uh, uh, banana uh, uh, pudding. Nice. A pound oh, of it. it was delicious. <laughs> it was a, the big bananas in it cut up with the wafers in it. Unbelievable. I mean, it was great. So I knew that I was going to get excited about talking to you. And I knew that I was going to work out early in the morning. So I had to eat the uh, banana pudding. I had to, big guy. And you know, I was thinking about maybe going to Publix and getting the red velvet cake. I was thinking about that too. No the, wonder he goes to the gym, my God. <laughs> hey, listen, that's the only place we get our birthday cakes for our family is Publix. They make the best red velvet, you know? It's oh yeah, key lime pie. Oh, we have a good time down in Georgia. See, it's 30 degrees down here, but you got 40 inches of snow up in the city. So oh, yeah. no, I got slammed up in Connecticut, slammed, but it's all good. Well, anyways, back to Mark for a second. So you're in high school, you were, you were raised in Holyoke, Massachusetts. You got drafted in what, the eighth round in 1988. I think you were committed to Maine, but you were drafted by the Braves. Did do so how quickly did you make that decision? In a half a second. A half a second. <laughs> you grow up playing, you grow up dreaming playing major league. You know, when you're in the, you know, the side of your house playing wiffle ball with your right. major league friends, your dream is to play major league baseball. Nothing against college, but I never dreamt of pitching for the Maine Black Bears or, you know, well, and I dreamed of, you know, playing Major League Baseball. And I wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed. So, I mean, I knew I got a scholarship because of my athletic ability and not academic abilities. Um, but, and I knew college wasn't going anywhere, but the opportunity to, to fulfill a childhood dream was standing right in front of me. And I remember the Braves offered me like, you know, at, at the time, I think, it's, 
I think we negotiated like they offered me forty thousand dollars to sign. I said no, I want forty five. They said okay, and that was it. That was about it. Wow, I like that. And if they would have said no, thirty five, I would have said okay to that too. You know, but. Uh, yeah, signing bonuses back then weren't what they are today. So I didn't do it for the money. You know, Ron, he'll tell you, guys don't do it for the money. You know, we love the No, game. back then, let me tell you, uh, back then, uh, uh, high school baseball was really not big down in Atlanta. Football was really, really big. But what's really big was American Legion baseball. That's yeah. where the scouts were. And uh, that's where you basically made your name. But first thing, you know, you get to the ballpark. And first thing somebody will say, you know, there's a scout for the Braves. There's a scout for the Brewers or the Yankees or the Tigers. And you get so excited. And, you know, and then you find out later that they're looking at you. And Mark will tell you that's the greatest feeling in the whole wide world. It's something that we we started playing Little League baseball and we played hard. And it was so much fun. And it's not like today where the parents are all on computers and they, they, they have lessons, they give lessons to this person and this kid. And there's so much pressure. We played, and Mark will tell you, we played wiffle ball. Uh, we played like stick ball. We had so much fun. Not only that. Your parents, and your parents didn't push you. And they came to the game. And after the game, you lost the game. That's okay. Did yeah. you have fun? Oh, it was so much fun. It was no pressure. It's not like a mom and dad will say, why did you strike out with a guy on second base? We lost the ball game. Why did you do that? I just paid right. $2,000 for lessons. Why did you do that? Right, and I think of, uh, speaking of no pressure, I think, Mark, you have a son that plays in high school, but he's not too into baseball. I think he's more into fishing. Well, uh, he loves both. I mean, fishing is absolutely his first passion. Uh -huh. And I never pushed him, you know, because I really believe that, you know, if you want to be successful at something, you have to have it in your heart, you know? Oh, and, and I never felt like, you know, come on, we're going to go throw a bullpen. You know, I never said no if they asked to go take that, you know, hey, dad, go throw me a bucket of balls or anything like that. But I never really pushed him because you have to love it. I mean, I, I ate, drank, and slept baseball growing up. I knew, I remember practicing my autograph in the second grade. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> And, um, but he's good at it. You know, I mean, I'm like six, four, he's, he's 17. He's got like three or four inches. I mean, he's like six, seven, six, eight. He's got a great frame for a pitcher in the last year or so. He's really gotten more involved and he started taking lessons, um, signed up with the travel team and, you know, he might be able to, you know, I don't know if he's too late to the party or not, but he's got a great frame. He's got a couple of great off speed pitches, you know, his commands getting there and, you know, I was a late bloomer. I didn't start, you know, pump up my velocity until I was probably, you know, late 19, 20 years old in the minor league. So he's still. Well, that's where you hit 103 miles per hour, right? In the yeah. minor league? Now everybody does it. <laughs> I know. Now everybody does it. Everybody. everybody so have you done a side by side with you and your son? Is there any, any similarities between the two of you and your pitching? No, not, not really. No. I mean, I think um, like when he was, I think like natural talent and ability and mechanics. He's probably further along the last couple of years when I, than I was when I was 16 or 17 years old. Um, but, I mean, we're down here in Atlanta where they have all these travel teams and perfect game tournaments and everything. Wow. And Crazy. You know, they have a lot of guys down here that people look at. And, you know, hopefully somebody will see him playing, you know, in one of these tournaments or something and maybe give him a shot at, you know, if he can help you pay for You never know. You never know. Yeah, you never know. You never know. You never know. Like I said, he, he's got he's to gotta want it in here. He's got to love it. I know? agree. I agree. You can have, and Mark would tell you, you can have all the ability in the world, but if you don't have it here, there's no way you're going to play. And Mark would tell you that how many ball players that you saw in the minor leagues, and when you were coming up, and you look at this guy, this guy is great. This guy has, you know, I mean, this guy could hit, this guy could throw, this guy could field, but he didn't have it here. Exactly. And well, you don't have it here. Yeah, you know, no, he wasn't committed, and you know, there were so many guys in the minor leagues. I was like, oh, I'm like, you know, miles behind this guy as, as far as talent goes. I mean, this guy, you think, you know, you're an A ball or double A. This guy's going straight to, this guy's going to the big leagues. He's a sure can't miss prospect. He's, but then, you know, it's a Saturday night. You're in Charlotte in the minor leagues. And you, these, those guys are missing curfews. They're out, you know, past, you know, you know, doing stuff they probably shouldn't be doing. And they don't, I mean, it takes a lot of sacrifice, a lot of discipline in the minor leagues and commitment. 
absolutely. As well as talent, you know, because I mean, the organization, they have ears, they know the ears and eyes down in the minor leagues. They know what guys are committed and are doing their job and not, mm -hmm. you know, taking their job seriously and running around after the ball games and stuff. So they're not stupid. They know there's a lot of money involved. They're not going to invest a lot of money that guys have put priorities in st ahead of baseball. See, Mark was eating steaks in the minor leagues where yeah, I was eating right. White Castles. Yeah. yeah. And, Mark, and Mark was making more money than I did when he was in the minor leagues than I made up in the big leagues. So I had to go eat White Castles again. I have to meet, I have to meet some fans, and uh, I've become real good friends with the fans, so they take us all out to dinner. <laughs> and listen, you, if you busted your tail in New York, your, your dinner was probably taken care of, you know? Oh, yeah, no, no. They, they, Natalie would tell you, you know what I mean? But that they, a doubt. They really good care of you. But yeah. let me, hey, hey, there's two things. They will kill you if you don't hustle. Mm -hmm. you. Natalie would tell you. In if you hustle and give 120%, they might boo you. They might boo you, and they probably will, but they still would love you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't hustle for them, and if you don't care, look like you, you know, you, you know, I mean, playing hard, they'll boo you outside of the, uh, uh, they'll get you out of the city. They'll get you out of the city quick. In two seconds. Not a doubt. And it takes a lot for a player to play in New York. A lot. What's that? It takes a lot for a player to play in New York. New York is a different, I mean, the, they call it the Bronx Zoo for a reason. <laughs> no, without a doubt. But I'll tell you what, like Ron said, you go out there, show that you care, you hustle your butt off, you give 110%. I, I mean, I was probably when I got traded to New York in 2001. I was probably maybe, maybe the 24th or 25th player on the team on the roster. You know, I wasn't very high up, up on the but total. You were there, and you know what? They treated one fan, fans in New York treat everybody on that ball club one through 25. I mean, I mean, obviously you're gonna have exceptions with you know Pettit and Jeter and Jorge and guys like that, but they loved you, man. If you wore those pinstripes and you busted your bit, butt, man. There's no better fans. There's no better fans in the world. I'm sorry. They're just they're incredible. They're really they're knowledgeable. They're loyal. And you know, I had a blast playing in New York, man. I really Where did you live when you were in New York? Mark, where did you live? George Washington. Is it Fort Lee or Edgewater? Right over there. Yeah, right Fort Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right over right over the George Washington Bridge. So I now when you there. first went to the stadium, when you first yeah. got there, did you go out to Monument Park? Well, no, you, no, no, you, you, you already played. You already been to the stadium before, you know, when you're with the Braves. Right, I've been to the stadium before. And when I got to the stadium, I got, they told me on Saturday in Cincinnati that I got, because uh, I had a no trade clause. And I know we talked a little bit about this earlier, you know, a week before, or two weeks before I got traded to the Yankees. I'm corrupt Bloomberg the next time. Jim, Jim Bowden uh, called me in the office and said, the Rockies want to trade for you. I'm like, Jim, I'm not going to call about it. You know, I was, I was recently divorced. My daughter lived in Atlanta. I don't want to go west of the Mississippi. And then, you know, a week or 10 days later, he said, you know, uh, uh, Cashman called from the Yankees. They want, they, they, they want to trade for you. Would you waive your no trade clause? I said, when do I need to be there? You know? And this was like a Saturday before the game in Cincinnati. And they said, well, they're home um, against Tampa. Um, they, they want you there before the game tomorrow. You know, no problem. Got on the first flight. And... You know, by the time I landed in New York, somebody from the staff or in the clubhouse or whatever picked me up, probably, I think it was Newark. And so I go, they bring me right to the stadium, right to the clubhouse. And, you know, the whole team's on the field taking batting practice before the game. So I get in the, I get into my locker. I see, you know, a name above my locker. I see the pinstripes. You know, we never have the names on the back of our jerseys, but, um, you know, to put the pinstripes on the first time. And I remember, I grew up in, remember, I grew up in Massachusetts in the 80s. So I was a huge huge Clemens fan. And when I was in high school, that's what I wanted to be. Clemens was God in the eighties when I was in high school. And so I'm walking out to the field for batting practice. And here comes it, here comes Roger Clemens walking in from the field. So I'm walking out and Clemens is walking in and I'm like ready to melt, you know, I mean, I got like seven, eight years in the big leagues already, you know, I'm pretty established and stuff, but this is a guy that I idolized and I'm walking out to the, um, to the, to the, to, out to the field for batting practice. And he's walking in. And he opens up his arms and said, hey, Mark, man, we're so happy to have you here. And I just like, I thought I was going to like faint and pass out. I'm like, this is just freaking awesome. <laughs> you know, it really was. And everything there, everything after that it was just an amazing experience. You know, it, it, it truly, truly was. I mean, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. But I think we do have a question 
I've been told, working from my multiple, multiple screens over here, I think we have a question from the audience from New Orleans. No, it was actually the audience. It came, New oh, Orleans. the audience, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. That was my <laughs> talk texting. Um, yeah, the question's actually for you, Natalie. For me? Yeah, people see that sign behind you that says spaghetti and meatballs. Oh. And they, they were asking what that's all about, that spaghetti and meatballs. Oh, oh is this Chris Colavello? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not cheating on you. I'm not cheating on you. I'm feeling, I'm helping Ron over here do a show. Chris. You can't go from one show host to another show no, host. I'm just a co-host for tonight. <laughs> Don't worry, I would never cheat on you again. I should have told you. <laughs> all right, thanks. <laughs> nice to meet all of you for the first time. Yes, welcome, Chris. My co-host for Spaghetti and Baseballs for the IABF. Hey, Chris, let me ask you a question now. When was your last year up in the big leagues? Uh, when uh, was your last year? 2016, I was in the big leagues a little bit with Toronto, and then 17, AAA. But 15 and 16 were really – 15 felt like my last year. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Who are you with? Uh, Toronto. You were with Toronto the whole time. Uh, yeah. Did you do a lot of stuff with Jesse Barfield? In, uh, I got to meet Jesse a couple of times. Um, he wasn't around as much. Uh, George Bell was around a lot. Okay. Uh, Devo Homer was Bush. around. Homer Bush. Yeah, I, Homer wasn't there. I never met Homer, I don't think. But, like, Carlos Delgado was around a lot. Robbie Alomar was doing a lot of stuff up there. Those are my favorite times. And, you know, got one of the, my favorite closers of, of all time on, on the call here tonight. Got to watch this guy on TBS my whole uh, my whole childhood. Was he one of the best? I thought he was, was he one of the best? I thought he was talking yeah. about Thank you up in Toronto. <laughs> I don't think you know. Let me tell you something. In the nineties, there was not many people can actually close a game as well as Mark. There's nobody. Well, I mean, I was hoping he'd have his hat on with this little flow coming out the back because that's I all know. I remember. That's coming back, man. The mullet's coming back. It's making it you need back. to you need to bring it back. You should have brought it back during COVID. Listen, you still have time. I'm thankful for the hair that I have left on my head, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> well, being an Italian, I I don't have to worry much about that. I'm actually trying to figure out how to make it go straight because I just got out of the shower. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you can borrow some of mine if you need it. I, I'm always willing to give some away. I'll tell you that much. I might take you up on. Are you in Italy? You playing in Italy, aren't you? Uh, I did. I did. I, I did a lot of stuff with the Italian team. I was like, I've kind of been bouncing across the pond a little bit, but I'm back home. I live in Massachusetts. We just got about 87 feet of snow outside. That's where I, he's from. Yeah, where yeah. Mass are you What's that? Where in Mass are you? I'm in Marlboro. Are you a Mass guy? He's in Holyoke. I grew up right outside of Springfield. Oh, I'm coming over tomorrow. I'm finding your address. We're hanging out. Perfect. I can't wait. I, no, he's in Atlanta. Chris, he's with me. He's in Atlanta. Oh, I grew up there, but I live in Georgia now. But Chris, oh, Chris. Well, You're a smart man. You stay away from all this. If you see this stuff outside right now, I was just texting with the softball coach at Alabama, Pat Murphy, and he's like, do you guys get hammered? I was. I sent him a picture. I was like, my dogs can't even go outside. I have two dogs that are about this tall. I could stack them on top of each other. They'd be buried under the snow. Yeah, I heard you guys got hammered. Yeah. Brutal. Snow England. Yeah, right. It's going to take you a week to get out of your house. Yeah. Like, it's fun, too, when you're having, like, a little bit of, like, lower back problems. Because this everybody told me this about as you get older and you get this gray crap in your face. <laughs> that, like, it, you start to get a little bit more achy. And now I had to go shovel snow last night. I told my wife, I said, well, whoa, 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 time out. I didn't sign up for this. Let's move back down south. <laughs> oh, man. You haven't even started yet, big guy. Yeah, you're right. I still got some barrels left in me if anybody needs me. You still got it. You yeah. still got it. I bet you can get a couple hits tomorrow if you what need What are you talking to. about? I couldn't even walk. Hey, I go to Old Timers Day. I can't even see right field. I can't see center field. I can't see left field. If they, if, uh, unfortunately, uh, when Yogi was still alive, he always wound up putting me out in right field. What I always did, I kept, you know, if somebody hit me a ball, I always kept an extra ball in my back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and I let the ball uh, hit the right field fence, and I'll roll the ball back into him because just take it out of my back pocket. <laughs> that, see, that's hey, I'm not stupid. Wisdom, wisdom over youth all the time. Wisdom over youth. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm not stupid. I bet you we could put a squad together with the three of us. We'd figure some stuff out. We, I guarantee you he still knows how to get people out. 
Absolutely. Oh, Mark, yeah, Mark, Mark could do it. You know, Mark, I, Mark's a baby. I mean, he, he still could pitch. Uh, I don't know about that. Know. You know, let me tell you something about, you should see Goose. When he used to come down to fantasy camp, he's like 60 years old and he's still throwing uh, close to 90. You, you get Jeff Nelson, Nelly's there, and, yep. okay? You get Nelly and uh, uh, Tanyan Sturts, and they come down to fantasy camp. I mean, they're throwing seeds down there. Yeah. You know, these guys, they paid $5,000 to go to Yankee fantasy camp to get striked out by uh, Nelly, and these guys are throwing 90 miles an hour, and these guys say, you know, put the ball right here, put the ball right here. They think it's real easy. They think a pitcher, you know, put the ball right here so I can hit it. You know, <laughs> I don't care how hard you throw it, you know, as long as I can see it, I'm going to hit the ball. Yeah, and I mean, it's, 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 it's a joke. It's, it's fun to watch these fantasy camp. Mark, have you ever played Yankee? Uh, you ever played a Braves fantasy camp? I did go to one fantasy camp, yeah. I went to one, really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, the participants who come down there, I mean, they're just diehard fans that really enjoy it. So it was a neat experience, you know. I only did oh, it once. It was great. Year, enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. Do you go? So you go down every year? Or? I go down every single year. But this is the first year that we actually – you see, the Yankees are a lot different than other teams. The other teams normally at the most will have two fantasy camps, yeah. but the Yankees will have like five camps. Exactly. They'll have a kid's fantasy camp. They got a woman's fantasy camp and they got two, uh, they got one in November and then they got one in uh, um, uh, just a regular camp with the campers, the, uh, the guys. And in January we have, a, so we have four fantasy camps wow. and we got, uh, um, you know, a, a virus out this year and, and it looks like probably next year is going to be virus out too, because people are still afraid to actually, uh, uh, even if we got all the shots and stuff, there's going to be a lot of people that's still going to be afraid to go out. I think it's going to take a little bit of time to do this. We're kind of like, don't see as much down here, Ron, because of no, the no, of it's a lot different. You know, we, I mean, we haven't been locked down like some of these other states have for so well, long. Just like Florida, I've been in Florida. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but <laughs> Florida is open. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Our kids have been back to school. I mean, some of, these, yeah. some of the stuff that's going on, it's just like, you know, what the hell? What, I mean, Every state is so different. I mean, so crazy. You know, one some uh, a school in one county is going to uh, 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 go back to school, and then another county next to them, they'll stay out. I mean, I don't even understand. I don't even understand with the shots because we're supposed to have like 10 million, uh, what, 100 million uh, things of shots, and we got like 6 million, you know, and nobody could get shots. They go on uh, online and try to get a shot, you know, uh, they'll right. booked out for like two weeks. And, right. so you know, I it's mean. It's crazy. It's just crazy. But let's get back to baseball. Let's get back to baseball. Okay, okay, come so on. So the Braves won 26 years ago. The All-Star game is in Atlanta this summer. You look, what are you guys doing for it? You guys getting together, Mark? I haven't made any plans yet because I just found out tonight that the All-Star game is in Atlanta. Are you serious? <laughs> you know, I, mean, I got three kids. I'm working, trying to sell houses. I don't follow baseball as much as I probably should or, or, or probably as much as people would expect former players do, you know? So, right. um, you know, I probably should have known that, you know, it's my bad, but um, I, I just don't, you know, I just, you know, I mean, I love the game and, but to sit down and have three hours to watch a baseball game sometimes can be tough. Hey, you found out last night. I found out tonight that the All-Star Game's in Atlanta. So, hey, you were a day <laughs> ahead of me. You got that going for you. you I never even knew it was in Atlanta. I lived hey, out hey, here. Nobody even – Oh, my God. I have a meeting tomorrow at 1130 to already talk All-Star. <laughs> I mean, you I'm already planning All-Star tomorrow. You work the network. That's cheating. That's oh, like – No, that's not cheating. I'm probably more focused on the spaghetti than the baseball now nowadays. Oh, I, I would love to have I'm some all spaghetti. About the spaghetti. I'm <laughs> the we spaghetti. got two Italians here right now. I'll give you some corned beef for some for no, some spaghetti no, and meatballs. Wants some pasta. Uh, no, I want Spade spaghetti Mark. and meatballs. I want the regular meatballs. I don't want these veal meatballs. I, I go down in the city all the time, and I said I want spaghetti and meatballs. Okay, Mark. meatballs. Uh, we don't have meatballs. We have veal meatballs, and we have, like, duck meatballs, and we got all this other stuff. I said I want spaghetti, you know, with the uh, uh, regular uh, spaghetti. You could put ragu sauce on it if you Whoa! want. <laughs> yeah, you put the ragu sauce on it, 
and I want the actually meatballs. And I want the, you know, I, hey, I'll, I'll send you up, uh, uh, I'll give you some matzo ball soup. I'll give you some pastrami. I'll give you some corned beef when I'm in the city. Yep. And you just ship me uh, uh, spaghetti and meatballs. That's all I'm looking for. Or I have to go to the Olive Garden and get spaghetti and meatballs. Oh, That's right, what we do. Right, right. Hey, ask Mark. Mark, you go to any Italian restaurants? <laughs> yeah, but look at this. Olive Garden. There's, there's a place uh, uh, over in Alpharetta. It's called Ippolito's. That I, they got oh, food. that's great. Yeah. Ron, right. you're breaking my heart. You don't understand you're I'm, breaking listen, my I'm, heart. My wife's Italian, so she makes great spaghetti and meatballs. Okay, so, oh, so, okay, so since your wife's Italian, yeah. one of the staples of our show that Chris and I do is uh, rapid fire. <laughs> it turns into, it's the slowest fire ever. There's no, there's nothing rapid about it. No, nothing <laughs> rapid. So my favorite question is, since now we're talking about food and Ron already broke my heart a hundred times, I mean, uh, Ron broke my heart. Is it sauce or gravy? <laughs> uh, with spaghetti? No, just sauce. Like, do you make sauce? Does your wife make sauce? Or yeah. she make what do you put on? What do you put on pasta? Sauce or gravy? Spaghetti sauce. Yeah. Oh, sauce. Like meat sauce. Well, he Ron called it. He called it ragu sauce. So I he, know, I know, but he also yeah, said no, no, no. Gra hey, gravy. Yeah. We use have Hey, gravy. We put that in Salisbury steak. That's right. Yeah, yeah we perfect. put that on Salisbury steak. Yeah. And we put that on meatloaf, gravy. But Ron also said Olive Garden. <laughs> well, my, but wait a minute. In, in all fairness, and I'm going to, like, Ron, I got your back. My mother could not be more Italian. When people ask me, like, you know, how Italian are you? I say, my mom's still on the boat. She ain't got off yet. She lives here, but she hasn't got off. Paul the boat. alone. Yeah, because, no, and this case in point, right? Like, Natalie and my mom have never met, and they're, like, best friends on Facebook already because yeah. that's what Italian ladies do, right? So yes. my mom... My mom, who is the most Italian woman ever, she grew up there. My dad met her when he was playing baseball over there. My mom is like, Chris, why don't we go to Olive Garden for dinner? I'm like, no, she goes, Chrissy, why don't we go to Olive Garden for dinner? And I'm like, Ma, really? You want to go to Olive Garden? And what are we talking about, you know? Oh. <laughs> hey, the only place that we have Italian food is in Boston, where we get, uh, uh, the, uh, no, no, the clubhouse guy. And that was big. But nowadays, these guys are getting steaks and prime rib, flounder, lobster. They get all that stuff. We get the uh, 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 hoagies. And then they put the uh, meatballs and they put the Italian sausage in there. And they put the onions in it. And they put that red sauce in there. Yep. Oh, unbelievable. Hey, I, did that when I, hey, I did that when I was a DH. And I didn't have anything to do. And I go back up in Boston, up in Fenway. Yeah. I'm not stupid. I'm not going to sit there when it's cold. So I'm sitting on the bench. I'm eating a, a, a big uh, a, 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 a hero uh, sausage sandwich. Yep. And, you know, sitting there listening to the game. And when it's my turn to get it back, I run down to the uh, uh, run down on the field to get my at bat. That's what I used to do, Mark. Oh, yeah. That's what I, I used to do. I was stupid. playing in the Mexican Winter League. In the Mexican Winter League, I like DH like almost every night. And uh, let me tell you something. Mexicans do one thing really well for food. They make the best tacos I've done ever had. Anyway, oh, yeah. right? it's, and so every night I'll probably eat like eight tacos during the game. I just go <laughs> kick it in the, in the clubhouse. I'd be crushing carne asada tacos. Man, I came back there. I look, I came back from Mexico. I looked like a taco by the time I got home. Let me tell you something. I don't know if Mark remembered. Remember the name Rico Cardi? Yeah. You remember, Mark, you remember Rico Cardi, right? Yeah, with the Red Sox, right? You played with Boston? No, he played with the Braves for many, many years. Okay, many years. Right. No, no, you're okay, talking about... You're right. thinking Petroselli. Yeah, you're talking about... Okay, but anyway, Rico Cardi was a real big uh, uh, guy from... Uh, uh, where was he from? Uh, 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 not from Cuba, from uh, maybe... Uh, well, whatever, down... One of the south, islands, yeah, south. one of the okay. islands. But anyway, what he used to do is... Uh, he, be he became the DH in the American League for a couple of teams. And we, we played him one time. He had a, a hot dog in his back pocket. He had actually a hot dog. And you could <laughs> see the mustard going through his pants. <laughs> they, they, they called him. He was in the clubhouse. And they said, Rico, it's your turn to hit. So he didn't want to lose a hot dog. He put his hot dog in his back pocket with mustard on it. <laughs> hey. 
Can, can I take one second? My dog's ringing the bell. Do you mind if I just run and let the dog yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll be right back. I don't want the dog doing anything stupid. Go on. Go on. <laughs> no, no, no. He, I, I, I understand where he's coming from because right now with all this snow, I, like it's I said, I got, I got these two. Clutch has peed in the house three times in the last two days because he refuses to go outside. And Clutch doesn't pee in the house. Bolt, like the new one, the mo the new guy, he's like kind of crazy. He's like off the charts. So I he poops in the house and stuff. But Clutch, right. Clutch is letting me down. But I, we have the excuse of snow right now. That's why. So I yeah, get see, Mark has. Uh, you got the big dogs, right? You got a couple of big ones. Me, I got. Yeah. Uh, we got a golden doodle. She's probably 30, 40 pounds. And then we got this. I don't know what it is. It's a real tiny, it's cute little dog. I didn't want it at first because I thought I'd be the one taking the dog for this little thing for a walk, but it's she's become my favorite dog. But near and dear to your heart now, right? Yeah. Probably like 10 or 12 pounds. But they do it for you. The best. Yeah. I remember I was living in actually Riverdale up in New York. And when the game was over with, we used to, uh, uh, Chris Shambliss and myself or Bobby Bonds, they lived in our building. And uh, I used to rush home and had to let the dogs out. And it's like about 1, 1 30 in the morning because that's when you used to get home. I mean, right. Yankee Stadium, you know, you try to get out of Yankee Stadium, it's going to take you two hours yeah. to get out of Yankee Stadium. So we always wind up staying. The game's over with 11, 11 30. We didn't leave till 12 30 at night, quarter one. And you get home and you got your dogs, you got to walk around. So you, you're walking around the dog at 1 30 in the morning. You know, I mean, uh, it's a harder life to live in New York City, Big Guy. Yeah. It's, really, it's not like living in Atlanta where you have a big yard like you do, and you could just throw your dogs out there and they it's go not out there. The big yard is five acres, he said earlier. Oh. <laughs> she's she's great at research. Oh no, no, no. She's, she's the best. best. No, no, she's from New York. Right, right, let, from, me ask, let me ask you a question. You should know. She's hey, they know their baseball up here. Oh, yeah, hey, no. they know their baseball. Chris, Natalie, Chris, is, Chris, we're gonna have Mark on our show baseball. next in a couple weeks. Right. Yeah, Mark, hey, we, come on our show, Italian American Baseball Foundation. Ask, hey, look. you're allowed on because we had the last the last guest we had didn't have a vowel on the end of his last name. It was the first one we had Joe Madden on, but he's a, he's a paisan. You're in now because you got an Italian wife, so you're exactly. good. Exactly, it works, and you All say right. sloss, so I'll let you in. Okay. Yeah, but Joe's a good guy. Who? He still is uh, Joe Matt. Is he still living up in uh, Pennsylvania? Yeah, he's got the house up there. He told me I could come over and, and use the pizza oven. He just got yeah. a brick oven. Yeah, he's oh, yeah. I mean, he can do whatever he wants to. Hey, Ron, let me ask you a question because you were yeah. with the organization a lot longer than I was. Why is what is so special about, and I'm not disputing that. that no, 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 tell me that it is or isn't. Why is New York so special a place to play? Why? Because number it's one, a mecca I, of everything. Okay, no, no, no. You're I, biased, I, Natalie. You're okay. not I signed when I was seventeen <laughs> years old. Okay, uh, lived in Atlanta. The Atlanta Braves just actually came there from Milwaukee. Uh, people that was at the Atlanta uh, 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 County Stadium. Baseball got bigger in New York City. It's it's like football down south it's a religion okay the yankees is a religion the mets is a secondary team i don't care what anybody says okay uh it is uh the Atlanta falcons is a secondary team compared to georgia okay uh georgia tech okay so the fans up in new york they are I think they, it's, it's like uh, Abner Doubleday. Uh, baseball started at, almost in, like in New York. And when you go by Yankee Stadium, if you are a, a, a visitor, there's one of the things on your bucket list that you want to go by Yankee Stadium or go in there or, or walk around there. And it, it's New York, the Yankee fans, or not just Yankee fans, baseball fans. You could be the Brooklyn Dodger fans, or you could be the San Francisco Giants fans, or the Met fans. They just love baseball. You know, when I got traded to New York, um, both my, my agent was out of Brooklyn, uh, Sam and Seth Levinson with Aces, and they they were out of Brooklyn. When I got traded there, um, you know, he was telling me, he said, you know, there's, so, there's just something special about being in New York and being a Yankee. He said, you know, you can go into a bar in the city, and there could be 
the most popular um, actor in Hollywood and Derek Jeter, and nobody's going to recognize that actor. You know, it's correct. Just, it's, correct. And that's just how it is. It's like, that's where their focus is. And that's where their attention is. It's on, and not just Derek Jeter, Mariano, Jorge, you know, uh, Paul O'Neill, Tino, Martin, any of the guys that I was fortunate enough to play with, but that's how it is. They worship, not worshiped, but that's who they would flock to as opposed to like, you know, the See, living in Atlanta and know Tommy Glavin fairly well and Jeff Glauser real well and uh, Greg McMichael and all those guys, you could walk downtown. They don't even know who you are, basically. They don't know who you are. In New York City, they know exactly who you are. It First thing they, I mean, they do. First thing they do, hi, Mark. Great game. Yeah. Even if you didn't, you know, even if they like you, if you didn't have a good game. Hi, well, Mark. I mean, to be fair, here in Atlanta, we have so many people that have come from all over the country. Correct. You know, I mean, you're in New York, you're a Met or, or Yankee fan, you know, a Jet Giant, you know, Rangers, Islanders. Down here in Atlanta, we have so many, it's like a huge melting pot from people, not only all over the country, but all over the world, you know, with all the, you know, corporate headquarters is that, you know, I mean, my wife's from Kansas City. She's a, you know, she's a huge Chiefs fan. You know, she, her family grew up watching the Chiefs. Because my guy saw him, he's playing in the game this weekend. Oh, wait, 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 wait a second. Before we talk that, back to New York and the Mecca and how amazing it is. Another iconic thing in New York is Saturday Night Live. Mark, did you not do a skit on SNL? I did. It was a blast. It, it, I just found that out. Here's the here's the who, Ron? Every year, my agents do. Um, my agents that were out of Brooklyn, um, they would put a fundraiser on every year. So there was a whole bunch of us that were coming up to New York um, for this fundraiser uh, for a charity event. And, you know, it's like all, a lot of the guys that he represented that were in the big leagues were coming up there. And every year we did something different. The year prior, I think in 96, we were at one of the openings of Planet Hollywood and, you know, Bruce Willis came to our room and like, you know, introduced himself, and, you know, so that was really cool. So, it was Sam and Seth Levinson were my agents and Sam knew everybody and everything. It, Sam could get anything done by anyone, you know? So I think it was Todd Zeal and Todd Hundley were talking. They're like, you know, let's put Sam on some wild goose hunt. Let's, let's see if he can get us tickets to Saturday night live, you know, cause they, I think the charity event was on Friday night. And so like, they did, they just wanted to give Sam something to do that would probably be impossible to do. So like a week later, we get a call back saying not only did Sam contact Saturday Night Live and get us tickets, the writers found out and wanted us to do a script for Saturday Night Live. So it was just, you know, it was nothing that Sam couldn't do. It was a, it was a, so everybody that was in that skit who saw it was represented by our agents. We were up I mean, at the charity event that weekend. You had Todd Zeal, Russ Davis, Cliff Floyd, Mike Sweeney, Scott Rowland, your Todd teammate Hunley. Gerald Williams, right? A ton Todd of you guys. Todd Hundley, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I Todd mean, Hundley, Chris, Chris Kattan, Helen Hunt. Uh, yes, it was called The Baseball Dream. Yeah, and Will Farrell was in it. Yeah, I think I was like early in, in, in uh, was it Farrell or Farrell, whoever that really funny dude is. But also at the end of that skit, they say that Ken Griffey was out and out, outside. Was he really outside or no, is that? He wasn't there. He wasn't yeah, there. I didn't think so because of what they, no. <laughs> yeah. I think I think Hunley, I think Scott Rowland yelled out something like Griffey's out, or as Hunley yelled out Griffey's outside naked or something like that. But exactly. yeah, I think they said that because Griffey, you know, was probably the most popular player at the time. Right, the, right. Yeah, because this happened in '97. Yeah, I mean, thought all the Braves were the most the popular players because you were all the only team that I could watch other than the Red Sox because TBS carried the game. So like, I watched you pitch probably as much as I watched Roger Clemens pitch when I was a kid. So. By the way, I'm very honored to be on the same Zoom, just FYI. I know. How the hell did you get <laughs> I appreciate it. Listen, I grew up, we were talking earlier. I grew up a huge Clemens fan. It was actually, uh, I forgot what card company it was, but they made a baseball card. It was like a rookie idol card. And at the time growing up, you know, when I was a rookie, they said, you know, who was your idol growing up? And it was Roger Clemens. So I don't have a copy of it, but there's actually a baseball card with, you know, me being a rookie and as Roger Clemens is my idol. So it was, and then the yeah. chance to play with them was just, awesome you know that yeah. guy i mean you know what you know what the thing it was about the yankees that surprised me more than anything is you know because they had so many great players i mean they, they won in 96 i mean they started winning in 96 i got there in 2001 but their run had already started and 
I was surprised one through 25, how hard every player works, you know, oh, yeah. before the game, after the game in the weight room, it was just, it was absolutely incredible. And I think as a pitching staff, Clemens was the leader of that pitching staff. Nobody worked harder than Clemens, nobody whatsoever. I mean, he, he set the tone because I mean, if, if Clemens is working this hard after he accomplished, you just had to follow in his footsteps. Otherwise you just felt like you were carrying your own weight, you know? So, but that shocked me more than anything is that, cause you always had guys on your team that were gym rats and, you know, spent a lot of times in the weight room. Every player on that Yankee team man, was doing something to improve themselves where it wasn't like on the field in front of, well, sometimes it was if Jeter's out there at one o'clock taking ground balls or something like that, but. Um, they worked as hard as any other team that I'd ever played on. And then hey, that's out. one thing that the boss did, that what George did. When George bought the team in 73 from CBS, he instilled, <laughs> he instilled uh, a, a family relationship for everybody. Yeah. Everybody, you know, I mean, he fired everybody every uh, every other day. Yeah. You know, I mean, every, every other day, I mean, you know, uh, you know, you're going to get your release papers, you're gone. You go upstairs up into the uh, uh, offices up there. Uh, you see people are packing, but the next day they come back. They got Billy, their- Billy yeah. Martin. Billy Martin. Huh? Billy Martin probably never unpacked. Oh, no. I, I, had, I had him for four years. And Jill, his uh, wife now, well, his ex-wife, who well, his last wife who lives in Ocala, I still think she gets paid by the Yankees. Awesome. And, you know, and I think he had- <laughs> You know why? You don't need a deal. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, but it, it was. Let me tell you something. It was. It was like it, it was a Bronx Zoo. It was. It was. I mean, it was so much fun. It was really. You know, you get to the stadium. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, you know, you gotta, you know, uh, bust your butt to do real well. It's. Uh, you know, you you bust your butt. That's. Uh, I, think Ron, I think Ron's getting a call. Ready. Back to the but back to the back to the Yankees in '96 World Series. I had to ask '96 yep. World Series. They bring you in eighth inning with a three-run lead. I'm having, I'm having trouble with my internet connection for some reason now. Oh, real? Is that right? No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That, no, hey, don't you let said it was that. okay. Don't let her bring that up. No, I let he said it was okay. Part of it. I'm sure there might be one or two Yankees fan on it. That the Yankees fans watching this that might wanna that might enjoy this part. So we're good. Yeah, so talk to us about, like, were you surprised when he brought you in <laughs> that lead? Oh, what happened? It, had, it, it hadn't happened before, okay. okay? But before we talk any further about it, um, as a closer, your job is not to save a ball game. okay? Your job is to get the last out, you know? Right. So, I mean, to me, the most important stat as a closer was games finished because when that manager hands you the ball, he expects the game over. That's it, you know? So, um to put the blame on anybody else would just be flat out wrong because my job was to get the last out and I failed at it. You know what I mean? Having said that, I mean, there was only one other time throughout the course of the season where I started the eighth inning, you know, and, you know, like I talked to Ron all the time, you know, I grew up a Yankee fan. You know, I saw Goose Gossage do it for two or three innings all the time, you know, uh, watching Mariano, that was nothing for him to do it. So I certainly should have um, been prepared and been able to do it. It just, you know, just one damn pitch that didn't go where I wanted it to go, you know, and that's it, you know, so. It happens, um, but thank you. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, you know, obviously it doesn't matter whether it was the eighth inning or the ninth inning, you know, I had a job to do to finish the ball game and unfortunately, you know, it didn't work. Natalie, out. you well, did. No, Chris disagrees with me. Thank you for Natalie, handling that with grace. Max Fine in Kangaroo Court for bringing that up tomorrow. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, you got it, Chris. You the got it. Jeff Kangaroo well, Court is. He not said I could. But, no. you know, but it's part of it. You know yeah. what I mean? I you, mean, no, you're absolutely right. And I think if we're going to show the highlights beforehand of the '95. Then you know you got to take the good with the bad. Yeah, and, no, and that's yeah. honestly, I think one of my one of my favorite things about players and talking to like through situations and. One of the things I don't really understand is when people don't take accountability for their mistakes, right? Or, or their, their failures or their shortcomings, because they're really not failures. The game, the game is the game and it's hard. It's a hard game. And the guy on the other side's trying too. So it's not like we're sitting here talking. I mean, I, I, I played for Rich Gedman for seven, six years in independent ball. And I, I brought up the 86 world series at one point where, you know, Stanley throws the Stanley yanks the, 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 the heater, it goes to the backstop and, um, and then obviously the ball goes through Buckner's legs and it's, 
they, they end up becoming like kind of iconic moments, but man, oh man, like I, one of my first introductions to Rich, I said to him, I was like, it must've been awesome playing in the world series in, in 86. And I was just some punk rookie in indie ball. And he looked at me, he's like, man, it's like, we lost. I hated it. And I was like, oh, you know, you're choking on my words, but you know, at, at the end of the day, like it takes, it takes a special, a special person to have gotten there. And then to obviously to be able to overcome it and keep playing and, yeah, about how many times have you played and there's a man on third base, you strike out with a man and you lose a ball game. Yeah. And, you know, it's not, you know, it's not the, uh, the pennant, but it's like a pennant for us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, if you're very, if you're a great hitter, you get three hits in every 10 at bat. Yeah. If you're a great hitter. Okay. And, you know, seven times you're not going to do well. Right. And I would tell you right off the bat, you know, I mean, if Mark, you know, I mean, if he's pitching now, if he knew, you know, I mean, he's not going to make the mistake again. And, you know, unfortunately, it was a mistake. It was part of the game. It's over with. That's the, you know, the good part about it. It's it's over with. And, you know, and, uh, uh, you know. Wrong for years and years, it sucked. You know, it's over with now, you know, 25 years later. Now you can laugh about it. Uh, yeah. I don't know about laugh, you know, because well, you know. You know. <laughs> I, I look back to I look back to our series in 2015, the ALCS, and I mean the, the World Series was teed up for us that year, right? We had we had handled Kansas City pretty well in the ALC during the regular season. <laughs> Felt good about the matchup with them. Um but you know, we looked up and before we knew it, we were down two nothing. And that's at, coming off the Rangers series. We were down two nothing and, and ended up beating them three, two, we won three in a row. But I think we kind of like took a deep breath after that series. And we're like, ah, we're all right. And I look back to so many moments. I had an at bat in the eighth inning uh, of game six, which ended up being the clinching game for them. Um, I had like first and second, two outs. And it was my first time facing Wade Davis. And I remember, you know, you talk about closers, like premier closers in the game. And I remember just feeling a little bit like that, I don't know, a little bit, not necessarily like nervous, but, you know, oh, it's Wade oh, Davis, you know, that. yeah. And then all of a sudden I, I just like yanked off a ball a little bit and I popped it up and I was like, man, if I just hit a double there, you know, we win, we're going to game seven. And then we knew whoever came out of the American League was going to win the World Series. So like, I get it. Believe me, that at bat, for as many good moments as have happened, like there are a lot of moments that haunt us. And it, for you, it just happened to be like, you know, you're the closer. You're the you're the guy that shuts the door. Not many people remember my at bat that game, but I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's part of the game, unfortunately. I mean, hey, yeah. how about if you're a field goal kicker? If you miss a field goal in the last three seconds, uh, yeah. the game, you know, I mean, it's you got to take the good with the bad. And, and Mark will Good. say, you know, I mean, it hurts. It hurts down inside. It's always going to hurt you, but you know that you know it's over with. You know, you got friends. And you know, like when you talk to people like us, when you're in three different organizations and you know, and we could talk, hey, the good thing about sports and baseball, we got a lot of brothers and we really do. And you know, we, you know what it is that can help you, um, you know, deal with things like that is that I know I was prepared. I know I gave a hundred percent. I know I wasn't. So, I mean, that's all you could do. I mean, I, yeah. I appreciate the kids yeah. that I coach. All you could do is focus on the effort. You know, you can't really, exactly. when that ball leaves your hands, it's really out of your control. You know, it's the, the decisions, the process you make before making that pitch. But, you know, if, if you do the preparation, you give 100%, and sometimes, you know, the results aren't going to be there. So you can, you know, it. don't get me wrong. I mean, I think about it, you know, when it gets brought up, it's not a, it's not a great thought to think of and stuff. But, you know, I know I, I know I, I was prepared, you know, I know I tried my hardest. I didn't, you know, I, I wanted to like bury that slider in the dirt. I thought I'd get a swing and a miss. I still think, you know, I, I think it was the right pitch. It was just a bad location. Like I said, I grew up a Yankee fan. I remember seeing Larritz, you know, play Pepper with the short fence in right field. And, you know, I thought he was getting on my fastball a little bit. And I thought, man, if I just, if I could start this slider in the strike zone and bury it in the ground, you know, he's going to roll over on it. We're going to, you know, get out of this inning and, you know, you try throwing that slider a little bit better than the last one or the one before, and that's when that's when you uh, you don't pull it enough and you don't finish it, and that thing just hits hangs up there. And Ron, I tell you, in the big leagues, you know, same. I mean, same hey, hitters, or let me tell you something. They don't miss mistakes. Mark's a great pitcher, but hitters are super hitters in the big leagues. They are. They paid to hit, and no. you know, hey, they paid to hit mistakes. 
Yep. And then this is what it is. Yep. And, and you know, I yeah. mean, if you miss a mistake, hey, more power to the pitcher. Right. Well, you know, you, not, you might not get another one for four times at bat. Right. The guys that miss a lot of mistakes, those are the guys that are getting sent back down to AAA. When I was up in the big leagues and I made a lot more mistakes, you know, I had a trip back to Richmond every other month too. So, I mean, that's what separates, you know, as you get higher up from the low minor leagues, double AA, A, triple A to the big leagues, it's the amount of mistakes you make are fewer and fewer and fewer, you know? And if you, you know, there's some guys that Maddox who just freaking never makes any, made any mistakes, you know? <laughs> or well, the small it, guy, you know? It, it's, it was, uh, you know, it's funny how you mentioned Maddox. I, I watched a highlight the other day and I, like he got a ball, he got a ball this far off home plate called the strike. And I was like, wow. That's a lot of respect, man. Like, I, and nowadays, like, somebody be complaining about barking about K zone, but I mean, you know what it is, though? Like, Maddox and Glavin, they have their catcher line up his midsection right on the black. Yeah. They yeah. Hit that black. On the first <laughs> inning, they're pounding that black, and it's a strike. And then the next inning or two, they move out. They move yeah. over. Another you injury. earn it. Yeah. You know, and, and, it, and the vision's the same for the whole plate umpire. He's hitting right. that spot. He's right on the black. Before you know it, the fifth or sixth inning, they're getting the ball four, five, six inches outside. But the umpire's seeing the glove not moving, and he's in the habit of saying strike, 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 yeah. strike, strike. That's so the part of the game that I think is lost upon today's generation, right? Because I grew up, and again, being around Rich, one of the things that I learned in my early years was we would always judge. When we're on the side, you can't tell. He's like, if the catcher sticks it, it should be a strike. Right now, it's, it's one thing if it's egregious, and the guy's like a foot and a half off the dish. Right. But like – you watch guys now catch balls like this and get calls. And I'm like, what are we doing? So the, the dynamic of the game shifted, like a little bit of the automation and technology is like taken away from, you know, the reason why those guys were so great in my opinion is because they could do whatever they wanted. They adjusted to whatever the game told them to do. If they were going to get three inches, they'd take three inches. You know what I mean? And like that takes, like now you take a little bit away from the cat and mouse game. You got these guys throwing 100, 101, 102, but it's here, it's there, it's over there. And then, like, all of a sudden, you watch a guy – I'll never forget this. I struck out on a 3-2 slider to Dylan Batances one day. And the, and McCann, I watched – I turned around, McCann was going like this to catch it. And then, <laughs> I turned around, and I was like – I was like, how are you possibly calling that a strike? He just caught it like this. And he's like, well, I, I think it was in the box. And I'm like, you're not that good. You don't know that. Like, come on, man. Like, hey, I, I'm going to let the dogs back in there, man, bud. Okay. <laughs> I love this. It's cold here, man. You can tell this is this is non-script. Yeah. Zoom. This is definitely. Come on these Zoom some more. Yeah. Oh, me and Mike Ford. <laughs> you get oh, there's hey, Mike Ford. You get baseball guys in a room, Ron. This is what what, what happens. We got this three. This is what we do. We talk we baseball. Three generations talk. covered right here, man. It's awesome. This is hey. I, I want to be hey, I'm writing my book with Thurman Munson. It's called The Captain and Me. It's yeah. all baseball stories. It's all where people never even heard of it before. It's wonderful. It's, you know, you go to fantasy camp and you listen to the older guys talk about baseball, about, you know, all these guys always talked about, you know, they hit the ball 500 feet, but it really went 320 feet. And yeah, every single year, every year, yeah. Farther and farther and farther, farther. And every time, you know, you, you talk to a pitcher and a pitcher, you know, uh, uh, through, uh, let's say, 91, 92, he's up to 101 now. You know, after like 15 years in fantasy camp, you know, he talks about what he's done. But, you know, hey, it's, hey, we have such a good time. Baseball is so much fun when you're in a group and when you, when you go into a clubhouse. Football is not like that. Basketball is not like that. But baseball, you always have stories. You always have characters in your a locker room. You're always giving guys hot foot. You know, I mean, you're always hiding things from uh, guys. And, yeah, hey, yeah, that's, hey, when we had Sparky Lau and when we had Catfish and we had Goose Gosses and Gidry and Reggie and all those guys, you don't even know if you're going to even have your clothes when you uh, after the ball game. You might not even have your clothes to go home. You might have to wear your uniform to go home in. But, you know, that's the type of, uh, uh, that's why they called the Bronx Zoo. We had so much fun. And it was, you're in your, you know, you know, I tell people when you get to the ballpark every day, you know, it's going to be a fight, but oh, yeah. during the game, you know, you're going to win because you're that good. But after the ball game, you start uh, uh, rigging somebody. And then when you come into the uh, clubhouse, the next game, the next day, you're in another fight. And then, you know, you win the next ball game. 
but it's like, you know, I mean, the Yankees are a lot different. You know, we had some crazy guys on our team and we really did, but that's what made us. And I know that uh, 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 Bobby, you know, came from, uh, uh, you know, came from the Yankee organization and then went to Toronto, of course, but he saw all those guys, you know, when he was up in Syracuse and when he played and when he came up to the big leagues and, you know, that, Hey, that's what made Bobby. Bobby was mm -hmm. made because he, he, he played for the Yankees and, you know, he wore that Yankee pinstripe and it means something. It really means something to put that Yankee uniform on and to go out in that stadium and to see those fans and, <coughs> And real, real quick, because I know you're getting bored listening and all this stuff. No. But how many, how many times do you see uh, fans doing their own, uh, uh, what you call it, scorecards? And That's these right. guys up in New York, they still do their own scorecards during the game. There was a few things before at the Yankees games that I always look forward to. Okay, the first inning when you know we took the field, the yeah, the guys in the bleachers saying Derek Jeter, and they they would do that oh, to you now. So that was freaking awesome, you know? And then the grounds crew coming out doing YMCA was awesome every night, okay? And then the dude up in the stands, I always thought it was a recording, but doing the Cotton Eye Joe thing, I didn't realize that was live every night. That's <laughs> Joey. That's a good friend of mine. That's Joey upstairs. Dude, I, so those are like three things that I love to come to the ballpark. Do. And then obviously if Frank sings at the end of the night, you know you won, so... Those are like four things besides the ball game and the camaraderie and all the good times you had in the clubhouse and one of the ball games. Those are four things that, you know, that was just awesome. You know, the fans, you know, acknowledging the players to the players acknowledge them, you know, the grounds crew, Cotton Eye Joe and, you know, Frank the, singing at the end of New York. There's just something awesome. about it. It was just hearing, awesome. Hearing the fans, hearing the bleacher creatures out there uh, coming out with the chants and the nicknames. I got to play – I've been in the big leagues in 13 and 14 with Minnesota. I never got to go to Yankee Stadium. So, the whole AL East was like, you know, it's what I grew up on other than, you know, Braves – the Braves special on TBS. But I remember going there and I was like – and you're sitting there and you're like, these dudes are into it. Like, these fans are just so passionate and you can feel it. And now, to your point about the spreads too, like, you can get – you pretty much get anything on the menu. The travel day – they, those clubbies were looking for that good tip on travel day, let me tell you. You know what's awesome? This is the thing to be said. You get goose for me, obviously, just as a fan going to Yankee Stadium. I've been going since I was two. Just like the goosebumps, just walking through their monument park. Like, it's just, there's just something about it. Just something there, about it. I was there in 2001, and I remember the last game. It was a home game in the playoffs when we beat Seattle. And that's, you know, Ichiro was with Seattle at the time. And, you know, you know one all-star, great ball player. But, like, when we knew we were going to win, it was, like, the, his last at bat, the whole Yankee Stadium is, che is cheering sayonara. You know, sayonara. And I was like, oh, my God, these guys are – they're just incredible. You know well, what I mean? They're, they're, Yankee they're fans awesome. just get on everything. I mean, they, you want to talk about research? They do their research, oh, yeah. you know, everything about every single player. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know what's funny is I, I actually got oh, – Ron's muted. I don't think he knows. Oh. Ron's muted. <laughs> yeah, we got to unmute him. Somebody do it from remotely. No, no, it. it's, right. you it's intentional. Uh, <laughs> Ron, like my dinner is here. I have to go. <laughs> oh, no, I think we have to wrap this up. I don't want to. Okay. Real quick, if you don't do well. In... <laughs> oh, no. Wait. What a jerk. <laughs> wrap it up. It's so messed up. <laughs> this is what I go through. This is my career. I got <laughs> Thank you, Mark, for joining <laughs> us today. Thank you, Frank. Listen, listen. I'll extend this conversation whenever you guys want. You guys come on Spaghetti and Baseballs every day yes. if you want. Yeah, we'll continue this for sure, Mark. Definitely. It's a good time. And I'll probably yeah. sit around about six hours at the gym because he's there. He oh, hey, Mark, he go on, take dog. care of your dog. I'll see you in the morning. Go home. Hey, what an honor. Guys, thank you for letting me sneak into this. Mark, obviously huge fan. Ron, huge fan. Chris, my love fan. you. Hey, Mark, <laughs> love you, big guy. I'll thank see you. Uh, I, I know I'll see you over the weekend. So, oh, there he is. So, everyone, thank you so much for joining us, the Ron Blumberg Show. Thank you for having me, co-host of Spaghetti and Baseballs, and to Chris Colabello for joining us. We're excited. Mark, thank you again so much. Hey, anytime. It was a blast. You know, I really enjoyed it. Love Love hanging out and talking around every day at the gym. So happy to do it. Yeah, I did get some banana pudding for you, you guys. Chris, I, I eat some spaghetti and meatballs for you.
All right, I'll bring hey, you some. Hey, 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 Lenny, time. Joe, don't but, hang up yet because I just want to talk about my new sponsor just for two minutes. All right, yep, two minutes, 100, 120 <laughs> seconds, that's it. Okay, okay. Hey, I just, hey, I'm really uh, serious now. I got a sponsor today from a real, real good friend of mine. His name is Miles Rundolph. And he's out of Boca Raton, and he's a sports psychologist. And I know that, uh, uh, Mark, remember Jack Llewellyn? I do. You know, okay. This guy does exactly the same thing as oh. Jack Llewellyn. And uh, he's going to be our sponsor. Uh, we're going to be talking to him uh, uh, some on our Zoom. I'm going to have maybe a, a special Zoom with him. And we're going to be talking about some uh, serious uh, uh, kids that are having problems with baseball. Uh, uh, he loves baseball more than anything. And we're going to have a lot, a lot of discussions with older guys and younger people, how he helps them. And he's a sponsor for me. I'm very, very proud. Miles, I love you, big guy. We're going to have a great time. Mark, I love you, big guy. Chris, I love you. Right back at Emily, you. I love you. I love you, too. Y'all have a wonderful time. And I, hey, I saw your white dog back there, Mark. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple of little ones back there. There's a couple of them over there. All good. <laughs> Love you, big guy. Enjoy See y'all. Y'all have a great day. Bye bye, bye, -bye y'all. Thank you. Bye. I think we're still alive. Yeah, well, Joe and I do a wrap up at the end. Oh, okay. Well, I want to listen to this. I never stay on the phone <laughs> listening to <laughs> I, I had to wait till Mark left to put on my 96 <laughs> signed by Jim Layritz, by the way. That's so, Ron, what do we get? What do we got on tap for next week, Ron? Oh, let me unmute him. Wait, Ron, unmute yourself. <laughs> Big guy. Oh, Chris is back. Chris is back. <laughs> Unless he clicked on the wrong thing. I don't know. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> you I, mean, I just wanted to say, I didn't mean to hit leave. I just want to say thank you guys. I appreciate oh, it. That was awesome. That was thank awesome. You. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, you, you so, for the pricing, so matter, by the way. <laughs> Ron, I love you too, man. I really do. I tell him not to mute you anymore. This is messed up. <laughs> he has no choice. <laughs> he has no choice. <laughs> I haven't even done it. If you guys talk to Mark, tell him I said thanks. That was awesome. I'm, He's yeah. wonderful. He's a wonderful man, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Just like he you. Could pitch too, couldn't he? Yeah. He could pitch. Hey, I just this is my favorite part is is getting to talk to the players that played before me that that made me fall in love with the game. Yeah. Well, this, you know, I, this I, show I, was this show was great because we, like you said before, Chris, we had three generations of baseball, and yeah. I, I think it made it. Totally, totally awesome. So thank you. And you got the spaghetti from my show. You stole my spaghetti, dog. Come on. <laughs> no, no, no. I want the spaghetti and meatballs out. You got the pastrami and corned beef. You got and it. When I I'm coming down to visit you in Atlanta. I'm coming down to visit you in Atlanta. Bye, you guys. Got it. Right. You got it, big guy. It's all yours. You stay with me. Right, we don't have you. snow down here. All right, Ron, not, you talk to you guys. See ya. Yeah. See you later, Chris. Ron, why don't you tell us about next week's show? Uh, who's going to be on? That's what I'm asking you. Oh, you always put me into great situations. Okay, <laughs> should I make up somebody? Or I, no, think, it's my Eric. Uh, I think it's Eric Holden. No, I'll give you a hint. Oh, Purim. It's our Purim show. Yeah, no, it's Eric Holtz. Right. Uh, who was my uh, assistant coach in Israel. But he I, really wasn't my assistant coach. He was my real coach because he knew about how to coach in baseball. I just knew how to play baseball. I wasn't a coach. I wasn't a guy to get on third base. Anyway, he's doing next week's show, but basically <laughs> we're going we're to have Eric Holtz on who happens to be the manager of team Israel in this coming Olympics. And we're going to be joined by two of his players, former major leaguers, Jeremy Bleich, and Danny Valencia. So it should be a great time. And maybe Mr. Bloomberg will unmute him for our next show. Natalie, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. That was a lot of fun. Natalie, I hope you enjoyed it. I love you. I You're a I wonderful you person. And anytime you want to help me do this and do this, you are wonderful. You're great with stats. Uh, 
you know, I don't even know if I'm telling my stats correctly. You know, like I said, I mean, you are going to be a good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>